Hello and thank you for joining me for Conversations with Kay Leadership Lunch Break Training. Today we'll be looking at team dynamic and dysfunction. I will include you? defining team dynamic and influences, as well as looking at attributes of a healthy versus unhealthy team. This will lead us to the in-depth view of the five types of dysfunctions and we'll conclude with ways to overcome them. So, team dynamic. What is it? It is the underlying psychological forces that influence the behavior of team members and their performance. As a leader, we need to understand that each member brings their own work habits, relationship building skills, and personalities. This will affect how our team communicates, how they work together, as well as the environment in which they work. We'll also see influences in our organization's culture as well as our leadership. So let's look at what it would look like for a healthy team. In a healthy team, we'll see a high sense of trust, healthy and positive conflict, commitment to achieving a common goal, and individual and team accountability. In an unhealthy team, however, we'll see a lack of one or more of these attributes. For example, a team could have a high sense of trust, but they could have a negative conflict. And this could be a result of issues not being addressed in an appropriately and timely manner, as well as changes in the organization's culture, structure, or a lack of buy-in by employees. Any type of or lack of healthy team attributes leads to dysfunction. There are five types of dysfunctions. So what we'll do next is we'll take an in-depth view of what the dysfunctions are and we'll give samples of what, will, what it will look like for us as leaders. According to Laconi, there are five distinctive dysfunctions. They are absence of trust, fear of conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability, and inattention to results. And in absence of trust, we'll see our members start to conceal their weaknesses and mistakes from others. They may, al may also stop asking for task clarity or help or offer to help others. This can lead to fear of conflict. A fear of conflict is when our members fail to challenge the opinions of, groups, of the group as well as come up with new ideas. So, you may be asking yourself, well, how is a fear of conflict associated with an absence of trust? Well, our members are failing to challenge when issues arise. They ignore them as if they're not happening, but yet they may start to have feelings of untrustworthy of members, or they may have feelings of resentment. This can also lead to our next dysfunction, which is a lack of commitment. A lack of commitment is due to a, a lack of task clarity, as well as feeling wrong or unintelligent. Wrong or unintelligent can also be associated with a feeling of weakness or a, feel of, a fear to challenge what the group is trying to do because they don't want to seem like troublemakers. Okay. They may also have a lack of confidence or fear of failing. Maybe your organization has gone through a structural change and your group used to be the top producer. Well, after the structural change, the policies and procedures have changed. Therefore, they're lacking confidence in being able to put out the same product because they're not used to the new procedures. This could lead to avoidance of accountability. Avoidance of accountability means that your team starts to feel that things are unevenly distributed or they have personal discomfort within the group. This is associated with the absence of trust, fear of conflict, and a lack of commitment. As you can see, any type of dysfunction builds onto and adds to the next one. This is largely due to the fact that within a group, when things change, it can be scary. And because it's scary, people will start to avoid things, avoidance of accountability, 
Well, it's not my fault because I did my part right. It's her fault because she didn't do her part right. But did your members trust enough to offer or ask for help? Did they challenge what the group had come up with? If no, this is an avoidance of accountability. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to challenge an issue because they feel something's uneven. They'd rather grunt their teeth and go through and complete the task when they should recognize that it's a potential problem and bring it up to leaders. An avoidance of accountability can also be a result of when the team does not have autonomy. So our leaders are the only source of discipline or praise. So as a leader, we really need to be careful when we set goals or we discipline our teams or we identify the roles and responsibilities because this can all lead to the absence of accountability. Absence of accountability also leads to inattention to results. Inattention of results happen when our team members start to only focus on his or her own needs. They're only focusing on doing their part right. They're no longer committed to the group or committed to achieving that one particular goal. They want to look good so they can go to a new organization, go to another team within the organization, or they want to look good so they can be promoted. We as a leader need to understand that an inattention of, of results is due to the fact where the employee has lost or they lack buy-in. They lack buy-in not only in the group, but in the leadership as well as the organization. So, what can we do as a leader to overcome this? Well, we need to encourage our members to question and challenge what the team is doing, to voice any weaknesses, or to ask for help or offer help when needed. This can be done by increasing team building activities as well as clarifying roles and responsibilities. As a leader, we need to ensure that our members understand what their role is, what we expect of them, and what they can expect of us, of us. This ensures that our team will be aligned and committed to a common goal, as well as help us to identify potential conflicts. These conflicts, as a leader, we need to address in an appropriately and timely manner. When we see something is wrong, we can't wait for the next quarter. We need to address these issues. Or we need to set up a system in which our team can self-manage those issues. And if they cannot self-manage those issues, then that issue needs to be escalated to us as a leader. In this particular training, we went over a lot of information. So please feel free to leave a comment or send an email to conversationswithk at gmail.com. You'll see another lunch break training in a couple weeks. So thank you for visiting Conversations with K.